We'll call the Seminole Airport Authority to order. Roll call. Stephanie Lambert. Here. Bill Wantland. Here. Tim Poplin. Here. Dee Patterson. Here. John Kramer. Here. Chris Anson. Here. Larry Church. Here. Corey Crabtree. Here. Shane Fisher. We have a quorum. Uh, consideration action of consent agenda. Moved to approve. Second. Roll call. Stephanie Lambert. Yes. Bill Wantland. Yes. Tim Poplin. Yes. Diddy Patterson. Yes. John Kramer. Yes. Chris Anson. Yes. Larry Church. Yes. Corey Crabtree. Yes. Motion passes. Are there any appearances or petitions from the audience for the airport authority? If not, there being nothing else on the agenda, motion to adjourn is in order. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So, so ordered. That brings us to the Seminole Gas Authority. We call that to order. Roll call, Jay. John Kramer. Here. Tim Poplin. Here. Dee Patterson. Here. Bill Wantlin. Here. Corey Crabtree. Here. Stephanie Lambert. Here. Larry Church. Here. Chris Anson. Here. Shane Fisher. We have a quorum. Consideration and action of consent agenda. So moved. Second. Roll call. John Kramer. Yes. Tim Poplin. Yes. Patterson? Yes. Bill Wantland? Yes. Corey Crabtree? Yes. Stephanie Lambert? Yes. Larry Church? Yes. Chris Hansen? Yes. Motion passes. Are there any appearances or petitions from the audience for the gas authority? If not, there being no other business on the agenda, motion to adjourn is in order. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, so ordered. That brings us to the Seminole Utilities Authority. Roll call. Dee Dee Patterson? Here. John Kramer. Here. Chris Anson. Here. Bill Wantlin. Here. Corey Crabtree. Here. Tim Poplin. Here. Stephanie Lambert. Here. Larry Church. Here. Shane Fisher. We have a quorum. Consideration and action of consent agenda. Move to approve. Second. Roll call. D.D. Patterson. Yes. John Kramer. Yes. Chris Anson. Yes. Bill Wantlin. Yes. Corey Crabtree. Yes. Tim Poplin. Yes. Stephanie Lambert. Yes. Larry Church. Yes. Motion passes. Are there any appearances or petitions from the audience for the Utilities Authority? If not, we then come to current business. Item number one, consideration and possible action to approve consent order 17-200, reoffer City of Seminole Wastewater Collection System, complaint number 150052 from the Oklahoma Department of Environmental Quality, DEQ, with an initial penalty amount of $11,250 due to the DEQ within 30 days. Okay, so several months ago, we had uh, been advised by the Department of Environmental Quality that we were going to receive, I, th I think it was around an $88,000 fine uh, for some of the backups that we were experiencing in the manholes uh, around <coughs> town, but mainly along Harbor Street near the cemetery and down Reed Circle, Reed Street, Reed Circle in that area. Uh, you'll probably recall that we've done significant work through that area before the backups actually uh, began to happen and during the time they were happening. Uh, we did a lot of work and the, the problem is still not solved. Uh, so DEQ has sent us a consent order, which is uh, the worst thing they can do for us, uh, the worst kind of penalty they can send to us. And they, we went up and met with them several months ago and, and kind of talked it out. They said they would drop the fine. And then three months later, uh, we, we finally got the letter. So the letter's in your packet. Uh, they've dropped the fine to 11250 uh, we don't particularly like that because we're spending a tremendous amount of money redoing our lines. And you guys know you've, you've appropriated the money. You know what we've been doing with the track hoe and, and that crew. We've, we've relayed miles and miles of, of bad sewer and water line. And uh, we're, we're making great strides. Our, our argument to DEQ is for crying out loud, we're we are spending all this money making it better uh, a fine is not going to help us do it any faster uh, but in the end uh, they felt like uh, the eleven thousand two hundred fifty dollar fine was a slap on the hand um, and they 
they went forward. Now, we have met since then. We have met a couple of times with our engineer. He's made some recommendations on a firm that can come in and, and do significantly more uh, discovery, I guess you would call it, in terms of uh, televising, television, the, the lines, being able to find out where the encroachments might be and smoke testing uh, some of the sewer lines. So we're going to get to the bottom of it. It's not going to be a cheap fix, uh, but I think this firm is, uh, has a great reputation and we'll be coming back to you uh, with a plan and we'll submit that plan to DEQ once we get the firm uh, hired. Isn't this one of those things where we've partly got in trouble because we do accurate reporting? Well, no, this happened to okay. be, no. I thought it was, I thought it was one of those. <clears throat> so this could occur again next year, the way we're sitting, is that correct? Well, the way, okay. The, uh, the way we judge the severity of the inflow and infiltration, we call it I&I, &I, into our sewer system is we go out during a heavy rain and we, we try to evaluate how much of that pipe is, is being uh, filled during a heavy rain versus <coughs> when it's not heavy, you know, how much of that pipe is being filled. And they call it full tile or half tile and, and low. And so um, what we are finding in that area is even though we've redone a lot of the lines up uh, around oh, Killingsworth and Spur and in that area, uh, the, the tile or the pipe flowing out toward the cemetery is still about three quarters full during a heavy rain and we don't know where it's coming from because a lot of that line is brand new. So that's why we're going to need somebody that's got a little heftier equipment to be able to find uh, where the encroachments are. So the, trying to, to give you a, a long answer, but the direct answer is yes, it will continue to occur until we find the problem. Is it still backing up into people's yards? Yes. Right now, no, no. Okay. I mean, it takes a, it'll take a two inch rain to cause this backup, but it's not running all the time. Oh, I'm sorry, I misunderstood your question. Well, yeah. <coughs> no, it on, it only happens when there's a significant two inch or better rain. But it still does happen. Yes. Okay. And as Steve said, it's it's not only the city. We're also getting I and I uh, from private. You're gonna you're gonna hear a lot from your citizens in that area, especially Ward Two in that area. When we start smoking that line, uh, it will, in many cases, end up in their house where they don't have uh, proper uh, p traps, or uh, or worse, is in their yard where their lines have collapsed and they've just ignored it. And we're going to be requiring them to repair that line so that we quit getting the I and I into our lines and that's going to be expensive they that we are not allowed to go repair their line on the private property so we're going to have to have to require it of them it'll be uncomfortable so do where's the money going to come from Jay? we actually have a contingency fund for this very rare occurrence <laughs> of penalties <laughs> so we have enough to cover that Now, w let me make sure I understood the question, Stephanie. Are you asking for the fine yes. or for the fine? The, the fix? fine. Okay. Yeah, and I know that the fix we don't know until we get the price right. on that. So, and you won't know that until you get the engineer. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Which an engineer costs money too. So. Motion to approve. Second. 
Roll call. Dee Dee Patterson? Yes. John Kramer? Yes. Chris Hansen? Yes. Bill Walton? Yes. Corey Crabtree? Yes. Tim Poplin? Yes. Stephanie Lambert? Yes. Larry Church? Yes. Motion passes. There being no <coughs> further business on the agenda, a motion to adjourn is in order. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? <laughs> Uh, Aye. Oh, so ordered. That brings us then to the City Council regular meeting. Call to order. Roll call. Chris Hansen? Here. Dee Patterson? Here. Stephanie Lambert? Here. Larry Church? Here. Tim Poplin? Here. Bill Wantlin? Here. Corey Crabtree? Here. John Kramer? Here. Shane Fisher? We have a quorum. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Is I got a missy and Mishka hunger you die, Kumukasapka and Quiche de Bado, Moment Portolofa Seminole, Moment Poesti Mulgan, Itinoka Chikitis, Moment Jimmy Sadik Missy, Anagetskas. O God, whose mercies cannot be numbered except our prayer of thanks for the city of Seminole and for all our people. Let us love one another for you, God, our love. Amen. 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 Sure. Now, we do have oath of office to be done at this time. Uh, a little bit out of order, but... Um, I didn't see the honor. I state your name. Dee Dee Patterson. Larry Church. You solemnly swear. You solemnly swear. That I will faithfully execute the office. That I will faithfully execute the office. Of Seminole City Council Member. Of Seminole City Council Member. As well as Authority Member. As well as Authority Member. For the following. For the following. Seminole Utilities Authority. Seminole Utilities Authority, Seminole Gas Authority, Seminole Gas Authority, Seminole Gas Authority. and Seminole Airport Authority. And Seminole, Seminole Airport, Airport, Authority. Airport Authority. And with the best of my ability. And with the best of my ability. Preserve, protect, and defend. Preserve, protect, and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the State of Oklahoma. The Constitution of the State of Oklahoma. And the Charter of the City of Seminole, Oklahoma. And the Charter of the City of Seminole, Oklahoma. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Consideration and action of consent agenda. Who's go for it? Second. <laughs> Roll call. Chris Edson? Yes. Dee Dee Patterson? Yes. Stephanie Lambert? Yes. Larry Church? Yes. Tim Poplin? Yes. Bill Wallen? Yes. Corey Crabtree? Yes. John Kramer? Yes. Motion passes. Appointments and elections. Consideration possible action to approve the mayoral appointment of Michelle Sneed to the Seminole Urban Renewal Authority through July 2019 to replace the position being vacated by Jenny Morgan. So moved. Second. Second. Roll call. Chris Hansen? Yes. <coughs> Dee Dee Patterson? Yes. Stephanie Lambert? Yes. Larry Church? Yes. Tim Poplin? Yes. Bill Wantlin? Yes. Corey Crabtree? Yes. John Cranford? Yes. Motion passes. And there's an, uh, an addendum also. Consideration possible action to approve the mayoral appointment of Bill Wantland to the Seminole Economic <laughs> Development Council. <laughs> so <Motion> moved. To <laughs> Second. I snuck that one in on you. Yeah. <laughs> Roll call. Chris Hansen? Yes. Dee Patterson? Good 
Right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Stephanie Lambert. Yes. <clears throat> Larry Church. Yes. Tim Poplin. Yes. Bill Wallen. Same. <coughs> Corey Crabtree. Yes. John Kramer. Yes. Motion passes. That brings us then to public hearing, an open public hearing to discuss funding assistance from the Oklahoma Department of Commerce's Community Development Block Grant, CDBG, for $450,000 in improvements to the Boren Strother area sewer system. already did that with the consent order. What I get to tell you about is the fun stuff. It's how we're going to try and fund partially the, the fix. Um, the a CDBG, a Seminole, a Community Development Block Grant, has a wastewater part and it's two phase. The first phase is engineering, the second phase is construction. Um, we are going to uh, get our foot in the door with the engineering and then try to ask for the $450,000 for the construction. We don't know how much it's going to cost yet. That's what the engineer is going to tell us, but we, we, we need this. And uh, with the consent order, um, Department of Commerce and DEQ work very closely together so they know that if there is a consent order that Department of Commerce will help us try and get this grant. So. Um, Go through it. Go ahead and go through it. Okay, yeah, the four chronic guy and eyes, two on Reed Circle, one on Harbor Street, one on Van Drive. The area that this is going to help is on the North Reed Street, going down Warren Boulevard to Strother, and then West Strother to Harbor Street. And if you construct a circle around all of those streets, that's the area that this grant is sectioned to help. To receive a grant, you have to meet uh, one or more national objectives that the Department of Commerce uh, gives you. Um, that is, you have to help 51% or better of low-income families, um, the prevention or elimination of slum or blight, and address an urgent need uh, posing a serious and immediate threat to the health or welfare of a community. I think it's the, fir the first one and the last one, definitely. So I think that we have a really good shot. I've been talking with Department of Commerce a lot about how we move forward, um, things that we can do to better our chances to get this grant, uh, their point system, and how, how we can get the most points so that we can get this money. Um, this is just the first phase that we're applying for. The second phase will come immediately after the engineering report is finished. We'll be able to apply for the construction phase. Um, we'll, we'll find out more about the cost when the engineering is done. I was going to ask, have we, have we looked into USDA grants as well for rural <coughs> communities? What type of USDA grants? Um, like USDA um, water and waste disposal grants. They have pre-engineering grants and they have, um, but it, we have to have a population of less than 10,000, which we do. Which we do. Uh -huh. um, have we looked into those also, like maybe coupling them or something like that? If it's possible to do that, I would be more than happy to give you a call so that we can talk about it yeah. and maybe get a little bit more funding. Um, sometimes housing and urban development takes money from USDA, so I'm not sure if it would work together, but yeah, I'm... Yeah, they have loans and grants for the, for rural waste and, um, waste, I mean, rural water and waste water, mm -hmm. and so that would be both of what we have. We have, you know, it's waste water. I will water. call yeah. you in the morning. Okay. We and did, I'll, huh? We did look into the USDA a few years back. Uh-huh. And what we found out then was uh, Seminole's rates were so low that USDA actually told the city of Seminole that we could fund a project, our 
our sales without a grant by just raising our rate means the national average. So at the sun, yeah. We didn't mm -hmm. want to do that. that yeah, that's they, it's really ridiculous. They were wanting us to raise it thirty percent or more. Yes, but okay. they they said they would loan us the money, but we weren't eligible for the grant okay. section. Okay. Okay. Well, that's you know those. It doesn't hurt yeah. to go back and look at the rules to see if they've changed their minds. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> yeah, or, yeah. or if they have another role for a different grant. Absolutely. Yeah. Any other questions? Any questions from the audience? Vice Mayor, do we have to a vote on a consent for this to have them follow up on it, or is it is that not necessary? It's not necessary. This is just the hearing on the matter. Right. Mm -hmm. That's all I have. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Uh, hey, yeah. I also would like to mention that um, a, chronic, a chronic bypass manhole, um, as DEQ sees it, is a manhole that overflows more than two times a year. If it overflows one time, it's not considered chronic. Two times, it's considered chronic. So we're talking about four manholes. We have over 800 manholes. Do you have four that are chronic? That's down from 100 when I got here. Yeah. It was, it was ugly. I think that's what I was referring to earlier when we were, when I asked about our reporting. We do self-report too. Yeah. We, have, we actually get up in the middle of the night, I don't know, crew does, and they go <laughs> check the manhole. Let's make that clear. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, credit where credit where credit's yeah. due. Um, the guys get up in the middle of the night in a storm and they go check. And if they find a manhole overflowing, the next morning we turn it in. They can just call me because I get some calls. I can just tell them where they're at. <laughs> <laughs> now they do a good job. I'll get this up. Okay, are there? Any appearances or petitions from the audience for the City Council? <coughs> Thank you. My name is Betty Finch, and I'm with Gateway to Prevention and Recovery and have been working in our community on our health and wellness. And tonight I have come to ask a favor of our council and all those in attendance. We have a survey of our community and it's just quick eight questions and we're pulling together information in our community because we are such a food desert. Some of you have heard this spiel already but let me reiterate. We only have three grocery stores in the whole county of Seminole, two of them which are here, and only one which is a private grocery store. So that means for any grocery store to make a change, corporate would have to approve that. So when you're looking at Cash Saver, which is Homeland, or Walmart, then the kinds of changes to improve health and wellness in the community goes all the way up the corporate ladder. So therefore, they are looking at our community as how do we improve your food desert. And you have by far a lot more convenience stores, smaller areas around. And so we're looking at your convenience stores and trying to pull this data together to bring back to our community to say, this is what our constituents are doing in the community and this is the information that we have. Maybe we can take next steps towards improving the healthy um, food that's available in our community. Would it be acceptable to pass these surveys out? Okay. Sure. And you have a choice. I've set it up tonight. You have a choice. I have a, a postage uh, stamp return envelope, or it won't even take you five minutes uh, because there's only eight questions.
there's no right answer. Can you flunk? <laughs> <laughs> There is an, another addendum on the uh, calendar at this point. Uh, we'd ask uh, Jeff Griffin to come forward. Jeff, on behalf of the City of Seminole, it's my privilege and pleasure to present to you this plaque, and I want to read it for the whole group to hear these good words. The City of Seminole wishes to congratulate City Councilman Jeff Griffin on 10 years of service to our community. The leadership you have provided has proven to be priceless. The impact you've had is evident. Your decisions have built softball parks, wellness center, the splash pad, roads, water towers, laid miles of water and waste lines. Your choice to lead have helped upgrade the water plant, baseball fields, golf course, fire stations, and too many other things to count. Your tireless efforts to make Seminole and even the greater city area have succeeded. Therefore, in honor of your many years of distinguished service, this plaque is presented this date. Congratulations. Speech, speech. <laughs> <laughs> they won't leave you alone, will they? <laughs> Thank you very much. You are most, most welcome. That brings us to approvals and acceptances. Ordinances number one, consideration and possible action to approve ordinance number 1213, an ordinance including annexed property in Ward 2 and updating the name of State Street to Boren Boulevard in the boundaries for Wards 2 and 3. I move to approve. Second. Roll call. Chris Hansen? Yes. Stevie Patterson? Yes. Stephanie Lambert? Yes. Larry Church? Yes. Tim Poplin? Yes. Bill Wantlin? Yes. Corey Crabtree? Yes. John Kramer? Yes. The motion passes. Number two, consideration and possible action to approve ordinance number 1214, an ordinance changing the official corporate city limits to include the newly annexed properties and to exclude any de-annexed properties. You recall the action we took at the last <coughs> meeting. Motion to approve. Second. Roll call. Chris Hansen? Yes. D.D. Patterson? Yes. Stephanie Lambert? Yes. Larry Church? Yes. Tim Poplin? Yes. Bill Wantlin? Yes. Craig Crabtree? Yes. John Kramer? Yes. Motion passes. Number three, consideration and possible action to approve Ordinance 1215, an ordinance rezoning 2222 North Melt Phillips from C1 Neighborhood Commercial to C2 General Commercial. So what we've got is we've got a Ford dealership that uh, somehow got grandfathered in to be able to sell cars on a C1. They really need to be C2 now that they've invested millions of dollars. And it's our opinion that w they ought to be able to sell cars on that property. So we'll bring it to the council and let you guys decide. 
Are they willing to make a contribution? <laughs> <laughs> You're in the market for a lawnmower. <laughs> Motion to approve. Second. Roll call. Chris Anson? Yes. Dee Dee Patterson? Yes. Stephanie Lambert? Yes. Larry Church? Yes. Tim Poplin? Yes. Bill Wantland? Yes. Corey Crabtree? Yes. John Kramer? Yes. Motion passes. Number four. Consideration and possible action to approve ordinance number 1216 and ordinance rezoning properties located at 1725 East Wrangler Boulevard and 1805, 2400, and 2425 Ladder Road from I-2 Restricted Light Industrial and A-1 Agricultural to C-3 Commercial. Can you repeat that? <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's uh, rezoning properties located at 1725 East Wrangler Boulevard. And I'm just kidding. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> so, go ahead. Discussion. I just going to ask for discussion. Okay. okay. Uh, we, we've had this in front of the Planning Commission a, a couple of times, actually several times, uh, where, on, is anyone familiar with Ladder Road? Do you know where the new Mexican restaurant is, Cata Corner from uh, the Walmart? Okay, so Ladder Road is just on the back side of that. So uh, for several years, we've had people request to build commercial properties. Hey, you know, we need, well, now we've got uh, a person that has a home that has run horses there for years and apparently they were not ever zoned to be able to have not just a ho uh, horses but shouldn't have had a home there so this is all trying to clean it up i don't think uh, sharon i don't think we've had any resistance uh, at all to the rezone uh, i think everybody assumed that it was already done correctly so now we're just getting it cleaned up motion to approve second roll call Chris Hansen? Yes. <coughs> Dee Dee Patterson? Yes. Stephanie Lambert? Yes. Larry Church? Yes. Tim Poplin? Yes. Bill Wantland? Yes. Corey Crabtree? Yes. John Kramer? Yes. Motion passes. Number five, consideration and possible action to approve ordinance number 1217, an ordinance adding hotel and motel contractors to the current building codes of the city of Seminole. Why have we not had that sooner? Well, we just we just have a developer that is is wanting it, so we're we're ready to promote the development of more hotel rooms. So that's where we're at. Was, did that answer your question? What? Yes, but okay. they they should have been under the code before, I would think. Well, this yeah, this is adding to the codes. This ordinance. Right, for licensing. Motion to approve. Second. Roll call. Chris Anson? Yes. Dee Dee Patterson? Yes. Stephanie Lambert? Yes. Larry Church? Yes. Tim Paul? Yes. Bill Wattler? Yes. Corey Crabtree? Yes. John Kramer? Yes. Motion passes. Merges to current business. Number six, consideration and possible action to approve adding 1031 North Boren Boulevard, known as USA Tank, to the acquisition list of the Seminole Urban Renewal Authority as requested by SURA at its March 20, 2018 meeting. Okay, so what we've got is a dilapidated property. You'll recall that you guys have uh, an urban renewal authority. The city has a, an urban renewal authority that by state law is giving broad permission to go and clean up blighted areas. And what they have to do in order to get, uh, uh, to actually take possession of a property, they have to go through a lot of action. And one of the actions that they have to take is to bring a property to you guys and have it put on an acquisition list. So that's what this is. In this case, we're talking about USA Tank. That's at the corner of Bourne Boulevard and Strother. You'll remember the old rusted building that's sitting there. Uh, that's been a thorn in my side for 20 years now. And we're, we're finally getting 
we're creeping up on it. But in order to get there, we've got to have it put on an acquisition list for the Urban Renewal Authority. And that's what we're asking permission for tonight. Is that on both sides of the of Strothers, I guess, both metal buildings, or just on the north side? Uh, go. Just on the north side. Yeah, it's it's not the painted one. It's the. Yeah, it's the same side as that. Right. The north end side. Once we acquire it, does that mean it falls under where we have to maintain? property as far as weeds and growth that kind of thing okay so if the urban renewal authority acquires that property yes they become the owner of record and they will have to maintain the property the the, the plan of course would be to demolish the building and take out all the the outbuildings that you can't even see because of the tall weeds and grass get it, get rid of all that and make it a marketable piece of commercial property it's a great spot. It just looks awful. Right. This is not action to buy anything yet. This is just putting it on their list. Move to approve. Before Second. we do that, now Urban Renewal will own that property. That no, correct? sir. No. Not right now. Not, not who, yet. Who owns the property now? Currently, it's owned by Ron Gould or USA Tank. And uh, that's the owner of record. Now, there's some litigation on uh, whether or not that's going to be somebody else's property is probably the best way for me to frame it. So, But all we're doing at this point is putting it on a list so that Urban Renewal Authority can, at some point, acquire it if they decide to do it. They have to deal with him then. Yes. Or he has to deal with them. That's more accurate. <laughs> All right, motion and second. second. Roll call. Chris Anson? Yes. Dee Dee Patterson? Yes. Stephanie Lambert? Yes. Larry Church? Yes. Tim Poplin? Yes. Bill Wantland? Yes. Corey Crabtree? Yes. John Kramer? Yes. Motion passes. Number seven, consideration and possible action to approve accepting insurance proceeds of $12,000. $58 from American Farmers and Ranchers Mutual Insurance for a 2013 Ford F-50 pickup as a result of an accident that occurred on February the 16th, 2018, with insurance proceeds to be held until such time that a replacement vehicle is approved for purchase. Is that going insurance price, Mike, the book price? Motion to approve. Second. Roll call. Chris Anson? Yes. Dee Dee Patterson? Yes. Is Stephanie Lambert? Yes. Larry Church? Yes. Tim Poplin? Yes. Bill Wantland? Yes. Corey Crabtree? Yes. John Kramer? Yes. Motion passes. Number eight, consideration and possible action to approve a permissive use agreement with RKR Exploration, Inc., Rick Taylor, that will allow the city to use an established roadway on Mr. Taylor's property for ingress and egress to the Seminole High School lift station and a utility easement located on school property. So that's all from yeah. cut and dried. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right now all he's allowing us to do is use the, I'd call it an oil field road to get back to our lift station at some point, if he sells the property, uh, then we'll have to go back and build our own road. But this saves us quite a bit of money trying to, to build our own road alongside of the new high school property. Uh, it just made good sense, and, and Rick w has been really good to work with us. At on this that. point, then he's agreed to that. Yes. Good. Motion to approve. Second. Roll call. Chris Anson? Yes. Dee Dee Patterson? Yes. Stephen <coughs> Lambert? Yes. Larry Church? Yes. Tim Hopkins? Yes. Bill Wantland? Yes. Corey Crabtree? Yes. John Kramer? Yes. Motion passes. And there are three addenda to current business. Number nine, consideration and possible action to approve the purchase of a 2018 Ford regular cab, cab F-150 pickup truck from Seminole Ford at an amount not to exceed $21,500 below the state contract bid price of 23500 This is a replacement vehicle for a 2013 vehicle totaled in February 2018 
The net cost to the city after third-party insurance proceeds is $9,444 to be funded from the Water Sewer CIP Fund. Was that the price before or after the rezoning? <laughs> <laughs> well, we should have considered that. <laughs> Jay, made sure it would be worth a bunch for coming. I, I, I probably need to mention at this point that they actually beat the state bid price. So that was very good, very generous. Motion to approve. Second. Roll call. Chris Hansen? Yes. Penny Patterson? Yes. Stephanie Lambert? Yes. Larry Church? Yes. Tim Pompa? Yes. Bill Wantlin? Yes. Corey Crabtree? Yes. John Kramer? Yes. Motion passes. Number 10, <coughs> discussion regarding a proposed dog park for the city of Seminole. I don't think anybody here is really ready to discuss. Oh, wait. Maybe you guys are wanting to talk about that. <laughs> we got a crowd tonight, so uh, you know we have we've been working with these folks. I'm teasing them now, but we've been working with them for months and months trying to get a plan together. Uh, the Seminole Humane Society has been fantastic, not just on our animal control issues, but uh, in this case, we're, we're visiting with them regarding a new dog park. Uh, we have looked high and low all across town for a, a suitable site. We looked at uh, the land next to the current uh, animal control facility across from the wellness center next to the movie theater. And, uh, you know, it, it seemed a good spot in the beginning, but the more we evaluated, it seemed just a little bit cruel to have dogs playing next to <laughs> dogs that were not able to play. So uh, we moved off of that site and uh, we evaluated it uh, behind the police department under the water tower. Uh, a pretty good site. The problem with that is it's so unlevel it's going to be very, very difficult to fence and to keep the fence in place. Uh, it's a it's a very scenic site, but it would have been really difficult. Uh, Long-term maintenance and washouts and things that would have occurred there would have been difficult to keep it looking nice. We ultimately ended up uh, going over near the Heritage House. So we're looking near the water tower, the Highland Water Tower, tennis courts and the Heritage House, you'll, you'll recall that there's quite a bit of land there, approximately two and a half acres, somewhere in there. Okay, uh, there's, it, it's not probably as large as we would like to have it, but it's adequate. So we would have a large dog park, which would front Park Street, and then we would have a smaller dog park that would front University Street. There would be one, I'm going to call it a portico, that's probably not the right way to define it, but there's one entrance into the park. You'll come in, uh, open the fence, you'll close the fence behind you, and your dog is, is in a confined area until you take the leash off and open another gate that takes you either into the small animal or, or the small dog or the big dog park. So um, the plan is to partner with the smart foundation they've generously offered a grant uh, our intention is to utilize that grant to fence the entire area the questions that have followed are what about maintenance and cleanup i think we've substantially got something worked out with the humane society to handle that the the, the one remaining issue that i haven't quite been able to wrap my arms around is the upkeep the annual upkeep for example buying uh, doggy bags that you're going to need uh, for the facility and who's going to stock those and things like that so uh, I, I have a, a feeling or maybe it's an indication that the smart foundation may entertain that as an ongoing uh, capital outlay expense uh, but that's not a sure thing yet so uh, more than anything, I just wanted to bring this. It's, it's discussion only. We're not asking for action tonight, but I wanted to bring it to you guys and, and get some feedback. Is that the right area? Are we, are we in the wrong place? Do I need to keep looking? What are, you, what are your feelings on this? 
I have some concerns about uh, being that close to the senior citizens center. If a dog gets loose, which all the dogs I handle <laughs> get loose for me from time to time, and a large dog, uh, some of the folks that frequent that center, if they were outside, um, don't know how they can outrun a dog. And uh, is agile or, you know, whether a person's really agile or not. But elderly folks, I think, would have a harder time getting away from it. And I wonder if that's increased liability for the city for any kind of insurance coverage or anything like that. <laughs> Might let our, let our insurance man answer that question. It's certainly something to think about. I, you know, I probably wouldn't want anything like that next to a school, of course. Same principle. Mm -hmm. So that's well, a, we'll have you to know, study that's that. the old central grade school playground. Mm -hmm. Well, Good I just have that concern. That the residents the, around there, mm -hmm. any concern with the dogs running and barking being close to residential versus you know was the is the city park ever been considered any acreage down there that we mow about five times a year okay so the the issues we've got many of course it has to be on relatively level terrain that's kind of the first thing that we've got to have because of the fencing. If you leave gaps under the fence, the dogs are gone. So we need relatively level fencing. And when you get into, in Seminole, when you get into relatively level fencing, there is usually a floodplain involved. If you get in a floodplain area, they don't allow you to put fence up. So anything such as Maine and, and uh, Strother, it's a pretty nice area. That'd be a great spot. The problem is it's in a floodplain, in a floodway, partially. Uh, so if you get over into uh, the, the municipal park, the same thing. If you anywhere where it might be relatively level, it's going to be in a floodplain. So um, that's that's why we looked at the one, the Adwan Park behind the police station. And initially, was it's a relatively unused park. It's a great spot, but it's really hard to get the fence to hug the ground when you're having that kind of elevation change. The only thing I was thinking, and I never thought about the water getting against the fences, but being on a main corridor of traffic, people see a nice dog park, mm -hmm. and I think that's cool, you know? Because I, I see them going to some certain towns, and it's, it's yeah. kind of an asset. Absolutely. Yeah. To see, that's the only reason I came up with that. No, but I, I understand, understand the flooding. I never thought about that. Mm -hmm. How about the, when you have to open the window? Is that kind of thing Uh, well, I, there are other options. The 1031, we don't know. That's, that, that's a, a ways off. Uh, yeah, that, that's, that's going to be a ways off on, on Bourne Boulevard. Um, what about Chase Park? I mean, it's... I'm, I'm okay. If you guys are okay, I'm okay. I think you're going to have some issues with the residents. I mean, those yeah, those houses are a little bit closer than the houses around the Highland Water Tower. Yeah, it has parking in front of it too, Chase Park. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of parking there too, but residential. I'm, if you tell me that's where we're going, I will definitely go. That I know will have a problem with that. Well,
which we're going to also have to figure out if we're going to lease this to, you know, like the Humane Society or we're going to the city's going to keep it. Well, but Who's I think that's what it? she's yeah. saying is they don't want it. That's right. That's, they, that's what they'll do the at. keep up, the upkeep, but they want us to have the liability, which we're going to have to look at. I would assume that the owners of these dogs too would have some sort of, you know, almost say assumption of the risk but have some sort of responsibility as well if you're bringing their dogs into a place like that and not controlling them but I need to research this from my end too to see what other cities are doing or how they operate probably would be a good place to start Gee, just what a place for a dog to run and poop. <laughs> All right. <laughs> just kidding. What do you think, Corey? You're going to have an attendant there all the time. I mean, that's, that's what it sounds like. That, for that, you definitely have to have somebody there during this so many, The problem with the city's liability is you're going to have to prove negligence on behalf of the city. Well, the city's not – you don't want to gain responsibility for somebody's dog. And the problem with holding someone else accountable is the fact that most of the people, especially if they live in a rental area, like there's a lot of rental homes in that area, probably don't even have renter's insurance or a homeowner's policy that would extend liability to your dog running off the leash and then biting somebody. We see that a lot. So those are the worries. I don't necessarily so much worry about the city more than the people because the city would have to be proven negligent to have a case there in my eyes. Yeah, we, we've we seen that too a lot of times, like on the swimming pool, uh, things like that. When you post your signs yeah, and yeah. they don't have a burden. But we always seem to get stuck with the, with yeah. the bill. But, uh, I mean, there's probably going to be some exposure either way. So we just have to figure out what the – I guess we'll just have to look at it from a risk management problem that it's going to pose is, well, just like you said, for those people who are getting out of their cars and are 70, 80 years old that can't run from the dog, you're going to have an issue, I think. But I guess you're going to have to put up proper fencing or something, I guess, to help somewhat. Just a question. Were you being serious when you said that the other dogs at the animal shelter were going to be towed? I mean, not really, but when I think about it, <laughs> I think that would be the perfect location where you can't put anybody because people who already have pets are going to want more pets. <laughs> and then you can take the animal shelter dogs and prepare them to be with other dogs. Um, so that, you know, if you if there are other dogs there, you teach them to not be aggressive and to kill people with other animals. Yeah, and Norman and Edmund have great um, dog parks or animal parks. Well, Amy, put yourself in that dog's position. <laughs> <laughs> if you're in the if you're in the pound. <laughs> You're gonna have to go check the manholes and see. <laughs> 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 I'm not Mayor, do you want an explanation on that from the yeah. Humane Society? Yeah.
across from the dog park. Your dogs are going to be running around our yard barking at the dogs in the dog park. They're not going to be necessarily concerned that the difference between our facility and an individual with their dog is 30 to 1. Um, the complication is not necessarily that we would be able to manage our dogs properly. The conversation would be how do I manage 30 versus the one that's running in the yard. Um, another issue that we would have in concern is yes, you would have someone who would be taking their dog over, but if you have any form of outbreak in your dog park and it transfers to your shelter, the city will be liable because if we have an outbreak of a disease, you're affecting animals that we're holding in the facility for the five day hold or for court cases, and now they've gotten diseases from the dog park. The concern is not necessarily having it back there, but the liability in relation to the animals in the facility, their safety, their temperament, and then of course the community involvement as well. I agree with that. Essentially, um, diseases never are concerned when you go to the dog park, but having lack of trees, proper maintenance, those things can be avoided. But again, if someone were to just simply say, oh, I'd like to walk my dog from the dog park to the shelter to visit, the cross-contamination is high enough that you're putting someone, your dog gets loose, we're putting Mr. Church's dogs at risk. So just as a thought that may not be considered, but from animal control, very concerned. Who wants, who wants the area behind, or just to the west of Cox for settlement? Uh, west, just a big, no. big piece of land across from oh, the Oh, Industrial Foundation. Mm -hmm. well, I mean, that's pretty flat. That's just flat. a big, massive piece of land that you could probably fence. It's flat, close to the shelter, but not on the shelter. I'm just curious. I mean, I know we use it for some parking for some events, but. I was thinking the My same thought thing. about that is, is that if you're going to go enjoy the wellness center, and see that, well then you're directly across from the dog park as well, so you can make, kill two birds with one stone, mm -hmm. make a nice afternoon of it, go walk your dog, and just guess it, I don't know. And there's parking nearby, the wellness center? Get, yeah, I don't know, just, just a thought. But you may have other uses for that, I don't know. Mm -hmm. That's, that's not, th that's going to be the industrial foundation, they're a private entity. Gotcha. Uh, that's not the city's property, so we've not looked at anything that wasn't city property yet. Now we can broaden it if you guys want to want to send me after somebody. <laughs> we can go I'm after. Just curious. Him. I didn't know who owned it. Who's on the industrial foundation now? <laughs> Stu Phillips, Ernie Willis, Melvin Moran, Bob Jones, uh, Mike McRae. I think we ought to use, try to utilize some of those parks that we're already having to mow and keep up. <laughs> you know, at least you can kill two birds with one stone there. Yeah. That's just my only thought. But you're in residential areas too. Yeah. But I live in a residential area and I've got tons of dogs around my house. But you had no say so. Mm -hmm. Or living in the city. Mm -hmm. Where we live, there's coyotes everywhere that bark all the time. So. <laughs> yeah, it's not much difference. Yeah, they have a taste for little dogs. Yes, <laughs> they have they a taste do. for little dogs. They do. I mean, you can control it, like she said, with lighting. If you close the park at a certain hour of the night, you know, they're not. If there's no open gates that you can't get into after dark, I mean, that controls the night part of it. So really. Two and a half, probably two and a half acres. Mm -hmm. they, they'd like to have more, yeah. but. We just have two areas that are small like this as well. Um, it'd be ideal. Okay, mm -hmm. so Any what I'm hearing is or? I need to look at Chase Park and maybe broaden it to other areas mm -hmm. that we don't own. Maybe sounds like options. it to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, sounds like that's what we're saying. Mm -hmm. Trade a park for something. Trade, Trade a park, park for something. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Trade a park. <laughs> I had a couple of ideas, but I'll discuss them with you later. Okay. Like a piece of land. Okay. Very good. Yeah. Thank you for the discussion. Okay. 
All right, that brings us to item number 11, consideration and possible action to approve a request from the Seminole Chamber of Commerce to utilize the Seminole Municipal Park for the annual 4th of July Festival to be held on Tuesday, July the 3rd. <laughs> to include the closing of Grisso to traffic from the north end of the park to the flood barricades at the low water crossing. The request also includes the use of Main Street as an alternative location for the festival in the event of inclement weather. We've been down that road just now. <laughs> We're gonna have snow. <laughs> no, just wait. Yeah. Move to approve. Second. Roll call. Chris Hansen? Yes. Dee Dee Patterson? Yes. Stephanie Lambert? Yes. Larry Church? Yes. Tim Palmer? Yes. Bill Wadlin? Yes. Corey Crabtree? Yes. John Kramer? Yes. Motion passes. Before we go to reports, we do need to. Uh, take an adjournment and go back to the Seminole Utilities Authority on the pickup. That was an addendum we need to vote on. I think we have that into the council. We're good. It's coming from the general fund. So okay. We'll okay, so we don't need to do that. That's right. All right. That brings us then to reports. Uh, the mayor's not here, so he doesn't get to report. The city manager. Yeah, I just want to welcome everyone from the Leadership Seminole class. If you could, stand up and let us recognize you and, and give you a round of applause. Come on, Leadership Seminole. Okay, by standing up, you volunteered to eventually fill these seats up here. Yeah, and dog park maintenance. <laughs> 18th is the graduation for Leadership Seminole. Okay, uh, groundbreaking, or uh, they're going to start dirt work on Casey's April the 16th. That's what we're told, folks. Uh, health, uh, on, I do wanna give you and the public at the same time a little bit. We'll discuss some of this in executive session, but um, for several years, we have been seeing remarkable increases in our health insurance rates. And we have been talking for many years about when will the, when will the back break? You know, what's, what's the straw that breaks the camel's back? Uh, I, think we're, I think we're there this year. I, I don't really know how to solve what we're going to be facing in next year's budget. Uh, I just want to put that out there to you so that you can start digesting and asking questions if you have any of me and Jay. Uh, what are the alternatives? We're going to bring some alternatives. Some of them are affordable, some of them are not. Uh, but eventually, this healthcare, I mean, we, we're both just shocked that we were starting to look by, by department how much of their budget is actually spent and in coverage for health care and we're getting into the point where you know 35 percent and somewhere sometimes up in the 40s uh, percent of an entire department budget is paid into health care and that's cash i mean that's very difficult when you're in negotiations with with various departments it's hard for them to see that as cash because it never hits their bank account and goes out uh, it's it's very difficult to explain what a great benefit that is. Uh, some people appreciate it, especially when you get older. You definitely appreciate the, that, and you're you're recognizing it. But when you're a, a 20 year old and you don't really have much use for it, so it's it's important for us to start thinking. All right, at what point are we going to say we give? Uh, we raise the white flag at some point and it's coming very soon that we cannot afford to continue to do what we've been doing so i just wanted to put that out there um, i want to thank mike and his crews for all the work they've done if you've been out to uh, the sportsman's lake lately uh, pete and that crew have done fantastic uh, if you ride horses you're going to notice what they did out there this week uh, they've 
they've spent a lot of man hours and uh, a lot of bumps and bruises trying to get the, the horse trails ready to go, and we want to thank, you, thank them for that. And again, I want to thank the Humane Society for all your hard work on the dog park and trying to help get that come to fruition. That's all I have. Thank you. City Attorney. <coughs> Growing season is rapidly approaching, other than last weekend. So, uh, starting to see some more um, kind of a spike in in some of our dilapidated structures and things of that nature, and I expect to see the tall weeds and grass to to start increasing. I always get the same um, kind of the gripes from the uh, people that have been cited. Uh, I think the my favorite is well. Nobody gave me a warning. This has never happened before, and I should be able to have a warning. And sometimes they don't do that, and they're not required to do it. So please don't expect to get a warning. Uh, they're probably going to go ahead and cite you. Uh, the second thing is when uh, somebody comes in, they said, well, I didn't know that the fine was this high. Well, the, the fine is, is about $300 for not mowing your your lawn and it's it's fair i mean that's with court costs so it's it's a pretty expensive ticket so please mow your lawns tell your neighbors to mow their lawns weed eat your lawns that's another one too they'll sometimes they'll mow and then they'll they'll leave you know three or four feet uh along the fences and things like that and it's still tall weeds and grass so i get that a lot and uh finally on the speeding tickets uh i guess and Chief Hansen can probably um, elaborate a little bit, but coming into town uh, from the airport both ways, uh, you guys seem to be working that fairly hard, I, I notice, and that is a, uh, th th those speed zones are there for a reason, and, and we've had some fatalities, as everybody knows, around the Highway 99 and 9 area, and I mean, there's not a lot of uh, sympathy if you're coming into town doing 65 and we're seeing that a lot so please slow down and watch your speed when you get when you get out there and that's all I have thank you okay Ward one Larry well I'd like to thank everyone for their participation uh, it's uh, outstanding to me that the city of Seminole has uh, the community interest that it has and I also want to say that our best investment in the future is anything that enhances the possibility that women and girls live in happy, healthy homes. That's where our future lies. We're becoming more and more of a maternal society just simply because of the divorce rate. And there's a lot of ladies raising children by themselves that um, we can always think of something to do that will enhance the possibilities for those folks. Thank you. War two, Stephanie Lambert. Well, just want to thank everybody for coming and thank you to the Leadership Seminole people for being here and Jay. But also, too, I was just wanting to, you know, I've <laughs> always got something to say, you guys. <laughs> so, these things right here, if you guys fill them out, I mean, this is really, really important to our community. One of the things that writing grants, I found out that we have the one of the fattest communities in the state. We have one of the most obese communities in the state, and we have one of the hungriest communities in the state. And it's like, how can we be the fattest and the hungriest at the same time? But it's food insecurities is where it is. And so we're not providing that foundation, um, you know, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. We're not providing the foundation that our, that our people are needing in our community, and that's, you know, healthy foods and, keep, and keeping those insecurities from happening. So. Um, this type of information in the community, your, your input on these things is very um, important for efforts that they're doing at Gateway and different, um, and different organizations that are really trying to um, get rid of those food insecurities. But um, thank you guys again, and um, thank you, Gateway, for bringing your stuff to us. Ward 2, John Kramer. Ward 3, Tim Poplin. I just, it's pretty much been said, and I'd like to turn out everybody that came today thank you for that and that's pretty much i have 
right. War oh, three, Corey. Let me interrupt you, sir. Hey, welcome to uh, the leadership class this year. If you guys haven't had a chance to visit with any of those guys, those are some great people in that class. I must have been about two or three weeks with them. We've kind of divvied up the responsibilities between some other people. There's, some, there's a great group of people, some great leaders coming out of that class. The dog park, I love it. Uh, I think that's just a symbol of a of a of a nice city. I, I would love to see that happen. So sooner sooner the better. But also to Jeff, who gave me some rather large shoes to fill in this seat. Congratulations, well deserved, I think. So um, to whoever is responsible for our street and putting the drain in that side, thank you very much. I ended up with about two or three, probably less inches of water almost to my door this last rain. So there's probably still, I heard some more work to be done on it, but I don't know if that rain was comparable to some of the ones we've had in the past, but it's definitely helped, definitely helped. And I know our neighbor is very appreciative. He's not living there right now, he's in assisted living, but he's told us that he definitely appreciates it. So uh, one other thing, we got a phone call last night about 10.30 that the alarm in our office was going off. And uh, so I take off and head down there and I'm not gonna go in that place by myself. But whoever the officer was that was on duty last night, the young gentleman, I don't remember what his name was, you'll have to forgive me, but he said he was the one that was mainly the patrol guy for that night. But I called, uh, I called the police department and they actually agreed just to stay there and meet me down there. He actually went through the whole building with me, uh, everywhere that I could look. If they were hiding in the bathrooms, he was in there with me, we would have found them. But uh, he was very, very professional, did a great job, and uh, I appreciate him staying around to help. So, young, young officer? Or? Yeah, he's young, tall, slender guy. I just can't remember what his name was. Yeah, he's a great guy, though. Did a great job. Thank you. Ward 4, Chris Anson. Uh, Didi Patterson. I'd like to thank Amy Britt in particular for helping on the fundraiser for the food pantry. I think uh, we did quite well, I believe, and uh, for every dollar we raise, it uh, will feed seven people, is that right, one meal? And that is great. And it's a, we need that in Seminole because we have a, a lot of new people coming in. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we have an executive session on the agenda, so we'll I'm ask for a motion to go into executive session. I'm going to go into executive All in favor? Aye. 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 We'll take a five-minute break. Get it? Come on, you can